Hi! Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll show you how to assemble the 3D printed parts for building the AR3 MK4 robotic arm, including motor installation and other structural components. All the 3D files can be downloaded from anonrobotics.com. Let's get started. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, so you won't miss any upcoming videos. Thank you. These are the 3D printed structural parts I made using ABS material, printed in gray color. For some of the larger parts, due to the size limitation of my 3D printer, I had to split them into two pieces and join them using epoxy glue. Make sure to print with 100% infill to ensure the parts are solid and strong. Before assembly, don't forget to tap the necessary holes to create threads that match the screws you'll be using. And here are the other 3D printed parts, which include the covers and spacers. For these components, I'm still using ABS filament, but this time in orange color to give the robot a more attractive and eye-catching appearance. Using different colors not only helps with aesthetics, but also makes it easier to identify each part during assembly. For the gear parts, I used black ABS material to give them a distinct look and to help differentiate them from the other components. Just like with the structural parts, some of the cover pieces are too large to fit my 3D printer's build volume, so I split them into two parts and later join them together using epoxy glue. Make sure the alignment is precise when bonding the parts to avoid any fitting issues later on. And as a reminder, all the STL files for these parts, including the structure, covers, spacers, and gears, are available for free download at anonrobotics.com. Other components include bearings, belts, and pulleys. Some parts, like bushings and shafts, need to be custom made to fit the assembly properly. Next are the fasteners, including a tapping tool used to create threads in the holes. Here are various bolts in different sizes, make sure to use the correct sizes as specified in the AR4 MK3 robot manual. The next parts are the stepper motors. Since the AR4 MK3 robot has 6 degrees of freedom, it uses 6 stepper motors, one for each joint from J1 to J6. I purchased them online from omcstepperonline.com, and the detailed links can be found on the anonrobotics.com website. Along with the stepper motors, I also received the motor drivers. These drivers are essential, as they control the power and movement of each motor based on the signals from the controller. Without them, the motors wouldn't be able to operate with the precision needed for smooth and accurate motion. Another part that came with the stepper motors is a 24-volt power supply. This power supply is crucial for delivering consistent and sufficient power to all six motors, ensuring stable operation during movement and preventing voltage drops that could affect performance. The first step is assembling the J1 base plate to the J1 enclosure using M4 by 20 pan head screws. Make sure you've tapped the holes beforehand to create M4 threads. Press two pieces number 32009 bearing races into the J1 turret housing. Then, install the number 32009 bearing onto the J1 spindle and insert it into the J1 turret housing. Make sure the bearing rotates smoothly, and don't forget to apply grease during installation. When pressing the bearing races into the J1 turret housing, you may face some difficulty. You can use tools like a vise, a bearing press tool, or even a car jack to help apply steady pressure during the process. Press two pieces number 30206 bearing races into the J2 turret housing. Next, assemble the J2 turret housing onto the J1 platform using 3M6 by 18 flat head screws. Then, install two M6 by 20 socket head screws at the front of the J2 turret housing, going into the J1 platform. The next step is assembling the J1 platform assay onto the J1 spindle. Then, Attach the J1 turret housing to the J1 base plate, including installing the gear onto the J1 spindle from underneath the base plate. Make sure the J1 platform rotates smoothly without any friction or misalignment, as this will affect the overall movement of the robotic arm.
Next is the J1 motor preparation. Install the J1 motor mount onto the motor using M4 by 10 flat head screws. Since I didn't have a pulley with a key slot, I removed the key from the motor shaft so it could fit into the pulley. Then, tighten the shaft to the pulley securely. Now we can prepare the J1 motor and the belt for installation onto the J1 base plate. For detailed instructions, you can refer to the AR4 MK3 manual. Please note that the motor cable position in this video may be different from the one shown in the manual. You can follow the manual for correct cable orientation. This is the condition after the J1 motor has been mounted onto the J1 base plate, and the belt has been installed between the J1 motor pulley and the J1 spindle. Make sure the belt is tight, a loose belt can cause slipping and affect the accuracy of the robot's movement. For the J1 motor cable position, it's recommended to follow the orientation shown in the manual. Install the J2 spindle into the J2 arm using 8M 4x10 flat head screws. Make sure the keyway on the J2 spindle is facing upward. Next, install the bearing in preparation for mounting it onto the J2 turret housing. Before inserting the bearing, apply a small amount of grease. This helps reduce friction and ensure smoother rotation. Next, install the bearing into the other side of the J2 turret housing, and attach the J2 tension ring onto the J2 spindle. Test the assembly to make sure the J2 arm moves freely and without resistance. Don't forget to also install the limit switch as part of this step. Next is the J2 motor preparation, which includes installing the J2 spacer and the J2 motor support. During installation, you'll need to temporarily remove the motor's shaft side flange. Be careful when doing this, as the flange can be delicate and may get damaged if not handled properly. The next step is installing the J2 motor into the J2 arm assembly. This process might be a bit tricky, if needed, carefully use a soft rubber mallet to help fit the motor in place. Then, secure the J2 motor support to the J1 base platform using M6 by 18 flat head screws. Next, Install the 3D printed J2 stopper. Begin by pressing the number 30204 bearing race into the J3 bearing cup. After that, prepare the bearing itself, and remember to apply a light layer of grease. This step is important to reduce friction and ensure smoother rotation during operation. Once that's done, install the J3 bearing cup into the end of the J2 arm, making sure it fits snugly and aligns properly. Next, Install the 8mm keyed shaft into the J3 spindle. Make sure the key slot is properly aligned for a secure fit. Then, slide the washers and bearing onto the J3 spindle in the correct order. Before installing, don't forget to apply a small amount of grease on the shaft and bearing surfaces. Next, insert the J3 spindle into the J2 arm. Then, slide the number 30204 bearing over the J3 spindle shaft and install the J3 spindle retainer to hold everything in place. After that, install the pulley into the shaft. To make the locking process easier, I drilled an additional hole in the pulley for better access when tightening the set screw. The next step is J3 motor preparation, which includes installing the J3 motor mounting bracket and the pulley onto the motor shaft. Make sure the pulley is aligned properly with the one on the J3 spindle to avoid belt misalignment later on. If you're unsure about the orientation or the parts placement, I recommend following the detailed instructions provided in the AR4 MK3 manual. Secure the J3 motor assembly to the J2 arm. Then, install the belt between the J3 spindle and the motor pulley. Make sure the belt is properly tensioned by adjusting the motor position during installation. Next, install the J2 side cover spacer and rest it in place over the J3 belt and pulley. These are the parts prepared for the J3 turret housing assembly, including the J3 turret housing, the J4 timing pulley gear, needle roller bearing, and the J4 main shaft. The most challenging part is installing the needle roller bearing into the J3 turret housing. Be careful during this step, if the bearing feels too tight, you can lightly sand the inner surface of the housing hole to make installation easier. This is the J3 turret housing after installing the J4 main shaft, the J4 timing pulley, and the bearing. Make sure the J4 main shaft rotates smoothly together with the timing pulley. Next is the J5 motor preparation. First, install the J5 motor mount, along with a washer and bearing into it. Then, attach the J5 motor assembly to the J4 main shaft, so the J5 motor can rotate together with the shaft. Make sure to apply grease to the bearing before installation. 
Next, attach the J4 turret housing to the J3 spindle, which is already installed at the end of the J2 arm. Also install the J4 motor mount onto the J4 turret housing, it also functions as the contact block for the limit switch. Next, install the J4 motor mount, which comes with the stepper motor package. Before that, make sure to place the 4mm motor spacer. Then, mount the motor and install the belt between the J4 motor and the J4 timing pulley gear. In the J5 housing preparation step, we'll need the J5 linear screw motor, which comes from the J5 motor, along with the brass bushings and a 3mm shaft. Make sure the shaft can slide smoothly through each bushing after installation. Other parts we'll use are the J5 carrier and the J5 housing. Next, install the J5 linear screw motor and the bushings into the J5 carrier. Lock the bushings in place using set screws to prevent them from shifting. Make sure the bushings can slide smoothly along the shaft. Next, place the J5 carrier inside the J5 housing, then insert the 3mm linear rods through the brass bushings of the J5 carrier. Make sure the carrier moves smoothly along the rods. Lock the ends of the rods using set screws or a small amount of super glue. The next parts to prepare are the J5 bearing post, HK1612 bearing, 3D printed bearing post spacer, and the J5 idler tension block, which will be assembled into the J5 housing. Next, install the J5 idler tension block, then place the HK1612 bearing over the J5 bearing post. Install the 3D printed bearing post spacer on top of the bearing post, and mount the entire assembly into the J5 housing. Next, install the 688Z bearing into the J5 housing, and verify that the end of the J5 linear drive motor lead screw fits cleanly into the 688Z bearing. Complete the J5 housing preparation, then install the J5 housing into the J4 main shaft. Next step is J6 housing preparation. Prepare J6 housing, bearing cap, washers, and roller bearing. Make sure the washer and bearing order is correct, and don't forget to apply grease. Press the number 30203 taper roller bearing race into the J6 main bearing support arm. Then, install the bearing, the J6 housing, and the J6 bearing cap onto the J6 main bearing arm to form a complete assembly. Before attaching this unit to the J5 housing, ensure the bearing is properly greased and all parts are aligned for smooth rotation. Once the J6 housing, J6 bearing cap, and bearing are properly installed into the J6 main bearing arm and the J6 housing can rotate smoothly, install the pulley into the J6 housing. However, do not fully tighten it yet, as some adjustments will be needed later. Install the J2 main bearing arm into the J5 housing, and make sure it is properly secured using 6M 4x18 flat head screws. Install the J5 side cover and attach the belt to the J5 carrier. Position the J6 housing at 105 degrees before tightening the pulley on the J6 housing. Next, manually rotate the J5 motor lead screw using pliers to adjust the position of the J6 housing, so that we can insert the J6 motor from the top and perform the necessary alignment. Next, install the J5 side spacer and the J5 side cap with the AR4 logo. Next, prepare the J6 motor. Before installing it onto the J6 housing, remove the gearbox decal or cap so the motor can fit properly into the housing. Then, Assemble the gripper, which will later be attached to the J6 motor. For detailed steps on assembling the gripper, you can refer to my previous video. Next, install the J6 motor into the J6 housing, making sure the motor cable is positioned correctly. I did not use a set screw to secure the motor, as it may cause the J6 housing to crack. You can use an alternative method later if needed. Also, attach the gripper to the J6 motor. For testing the gripper movement, I used a servo tester.
Now that the mechanical assembly is complete, this is the AR4 MK3 robot with all structural parts, motors, belts, and pulleys fully installed. We can now check each motor axis to ensure it rotates smoothly without any obstruction. Thank you for watching this video until the end. In this part, we've only completed the mechanical assembly of the AR4 MK3 robot, including the structure, motors, belts, pulleys, and other supporting parts. The electrical and wiring components will be covered in a separate upcoming video. Please note that most of the parts in this build are made from 3D printed plastic, so you need to be extra careful during assembly. Avoid over-tightening the bolts, as it can damage the threads or even crack the printed parts. Apply just enough pressure and ensure that everything is aligned properly and moves freely. If you found this video helpful and want to follow the rest of the build, don't forget to like and subscribe. So you don't miss the next videos about electrical setup, wiring, and final testing of the robot. See you in the next video, and good luck with your own build.